Hi, this is David Das from Motu. In this video, we're going to take a look at some techniques for working with tempo-based material in Digital Performer. I'll show you how to work with Apple Loops and acidized WAV files and things like that. I'll show you how to identify tempo of material that you don't know the tempo of. And I'll show you how you can conform tempo that may not even have been recorded to a click to a steady metronome. First, let's take a look at DP's preferences in the Editing Automatic Conversions page. There's an option here that lets you specify how DP should handle audio that's been pre-tagged with tempo, as Apple Loops, acidized WAV files, and so on have. You can have it automatically convert to the sequence tempo just by clicking this option. So let's look at my sequence. Just as an example, let's set my sequence to 120 BPM. Here's an Apple Loop I got from a commercial loop library, and it's tagged at 105 BPM. Because I just set that option in the preferences, as I drag this into the DP sequence, DP will see that its root tempo is 105, the sequence tempo is 120, and it'll automatically time stretch this Apple loop to 120 BPM. Here's the new loop. Here, let me add a few more loops to my sequence. I'll drag in a 90 BPM Santour loop, and a 140 BPM Bongo loop, and a 94 BPM low bell loop. The low bell loop looks like it's only one measure, so I'll option drag a copy of it. And now, let's hear our new track. Digital Performer makes it extremely easy to quickly assemble loop-based material to form new pieces of music. Sometimes I'll receive a file from a client, but I don't know what the tempo is. There's several ways to figure it out, but here's a couple of the fastest. If I only need a quick approximation of its tempo, the fastest way is to simply use the tap tempo feature. I can play it in the finder by hitting the spacebar, then switch into DP, switch to the tap pad, and click on it along with the track. And DP will measure the distance between my clicks and calculate the tempo. But the tap tempo feature is only an approximation, and if I need a more detailed analysis, here's a better technique. I'm going to import this full mix into DP. From listening to it, I can guess it's the type of song that was probably recorded to a click. Let's switch over to the sequence editor and make sure the grid is disabled. The first thing I'm going to do is temporarily edge edit the sound bite so that it starts right on a downbeat, or as close as I can get to one. Now. I'll move the sound bite so that it starts on a downbeat bar line. This will help me later. To get it accurate, I can click it, then type 2, tab 1, tab 0, right here. Now, I want to isolate a specific number of beats. 4 or 8 would be great. Let me listen to the track and see if I can locate a good split point. Right here. This transient is a downbeat. I'll tap the C key to get my scissors tool and make a cut as close as possible to that downbeat there. Now I've isolated eight beats in that first soundbite. Now, let's select our eight beat soundbite and go to the audio menu and choose Soundbite Tempo, Set Soundbite Tempo. DP has pre-filled the information in with its best guess, but I'm going to override it and manually tell it the true length, which is eight beats. As soon as I type that in, DP recalculates that it now thinks the tempo is 140.38 BPM. I can make a reasonable guess that the decimal points were probably just due to my approximate cutting, so let's assume the tempo of this is really 140 BPM. I'll fill in 140, and clicking OK now tags that audio as 140 BPM. But let's say I don't want this song to play at 140 BPM. I'll shift click both sound bites and choose Edit Heal Separation. I'd also like to get back the pickup notes, so I'll edge edit to get those back. This whole soundbite is still tagged at 140 because of the set soundbite tempo command I did a minute ago. But now watch what happens if I change my sequence tempo to, let's say, 180 BPM, and then I choose Audio, Adjust Soundbites to Sequence Tempo. Have a listen to the song, now time stretched to a perfect 180 BPM.
Sometimes, situations may arise in which you're dealing with audio in which the tempo varies a lot. Maybe it wasn't recorded to a click at all. DP has some great tools for dealing with this. I'm going to import this clip of some drums which weren't recorded to a click at all, and have some pretty loose tempo variations inside it. Have a listen to it in its original state first. So here's how I attack this. The concept of what I'm going to do is move DP's bar lines until they match the performance in its current state. In other words, I'm going to make a tempo map of this playing. First, I'll make sure my sequence editor's grid is off. Then I'll move the sound bite so that the first note, which feels like a downbeat, is lined up on a measure line. Also, a metronome will be very helpful. So I'm going to double click on my metronome's preferences and make sure that it's set to always play. To start the tempo mapping process, I need to put my sequence in conductor track mode. Then I can go to the project menu, conductor track, adjust beats. I need to make sure that drag beats and edit window is turned on. I'm going to start by adjusting measures. Then if the control isn't fine enough, I could go back and adjust individual beats later. I also like applying the adjusted beats tempo until the end of the sequence. I need to keep the adjust beats window open and switch to the sequence editor, where now, if I put my mouse in the ruler area, a new cursor appears, which allows me to drag bar lines. The song starts at measure two, so start by figuring out where the bar line for measure three belongs. It's pretty easy to see visually, so let me drag it there and now listen to the click and see if it lines up well. I'm now going to work my way through the song, moving measure lines until they line up either visually or audibly, and that click follows the contour of the drummer's tempo. What DP is doing while I do this is calculating measure by measure tempo changes that enable it to follow the tempo of the drums. Another way to explain what I'm doing is that I'm looking at DP's measure lines and comparing them to where I see the drum hits in the waveform. Then I'm moving those measure lines to line up with them. Now that I've finished, let's listen back to the new tempo map that follows this rather erratic drummer. If the aim was to create a tempo map and continue work on the song in its current state, I've finished. Now if I were to add new MIDI tracks to the song and use Quantize, Quantize will be able to pull notes in towards this new custom grid. But DP can take it a step further. I'm going to click on the soundbite and choose Audio, Copy Sequence Tempo to Soundbite. This is going to imprint each of these tempo changes into the drum performance, which will be very useful in a moment. Let's click on our conductor track and hit the Shift E key to bring up the event list, where we can now see all the tempo changes we made. I'm going to delete all the tempo changes except for the first one. Now I can change that first tempo to an even 200 BPM. Then I'll go back to the audio file, click it, and go to the audio menu and choose Adjust Sound Bytes to Sequence Tempo. What DP is going to do is compare each measure to 200 BPM and then stretch or compress it until it matches 200 BPM. Now, if I hit play, you can listen to a completely steady, adjusted performance. And that's a look at some techniques for working with tempo-based material in Digital Performer.